Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the just about annual 67 Hail Hail Award, season 21-22. I'm Hamish, we've got John here, we've got Stevie here as well. Stevie, hopefully for the next hour, but I know there's a big question mark there at the moment. Is you not going to say something or is it up to me to deliver the punchline? But there is no punchline. No, it's just reality. Unfortunately, everyone, I am on call now, so I'm having to look down at my phone constantly. And I know that Hamish and John are praying that something does come in, because I know there's nothing worse for the evening to be spending an hour or so with me. So stay strong, guys. John, you're definitely here for the next hour. I'm here until the better end. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we should probably get started if there's a few to get through and, and Stevie's away, he's got the bat signal on. Yeah, well, hello everyone. Thank you very much for, for joining us. Um, we're going to start with the uh, awards that we can't debate, the awards that are effectively written in stone, the non-debatable mm. awards, and that beautiful man there on the left-hand side. Top goal scorer this season, Kyogo Furuhashi, with 20 goals, most assists, Jota, with 14, and the most minutes played across all the competitions, Callum McGregor. Um, the bottom half there under the yellow writing, John, is only for the Premiership and the Europa mm. League. A lot of Carol Starfelt in there. Yeah, there's a, a domination of the centre-backs, just given the, the way Celtic play and the way Celtic build out the back. A lot of safe possession, um, a lot of sideways possession, but I think increasingly Starfelt and Carter Vickers have, have done well to, to keep the ball moving forward more and more as the season's progressed. I mean, the, the, the start there... Most passes, Carl Starfelt is more an indication that perhaps opposition teams leave him on the ball more than other teams, more than pressing other players. Um, but some interesting stuff there, nonetheless. I mean, the one that stands out for me is David Turnbull with most key passes, ninety-three. He's head and shoulders above anyone other any other player in the whole squad, and effectively did that in half a season. Um, and I think that's pretty impressive. Key passes, of course, means uh, a pass that uh, leads to a, a Celtic chance. So um, interesting stuff there. Um, I like seeing the raw numbers. Obviously, you can take these as a percentage. I think Carol Startfelt had 250 aerial duels in total, 162 of them. That's mm. just the total number. People will be looking at percentages and like per 90 minutes and all that. But these are the raw numbers totaled up across the whole season. So I thought that was just interesting to, to point out before we get started here. Yeah, good to get those down. Carol Starfield's actually quite good in the air, and I feel like when he first came to the club, that was an area people were looking at. It's, uh, Carter Vickers was almost the kind of powerful one. Um, I think Starfield's really come on in terms of his, his aerial duels, and he barely loses a header now or at the end of the season. So delighted with that. Now, first award, getting into the, the real stuff we can get into. Um, it's a good start. The worst <laughs> pundit opinion on Celtic award. Now, this is mainly for kind of external pundits, not including ourselves in that, because it'd be far well, too much to get through. But <laughs> what I'm going to say is, Stevie, I think you do. Do you have one of yourself straight away? I don't know what you're talking about, no. <laughs> yeah, it was like, after the, the <clears throat> Yablonitz game very early on yep. in the season. May even have been your debut on the channel. No, it wasn't. That was my second game. The first game was in Denmark. First game, first appearance was in Denmark. I wasn't playing right. there. I could have made a difference. Anyway. A anyway. People know I like to eat pie and I am here tonight to eat humble pie because I was really harsh on Greg Taylor and Anthony Ralston at the, I'm not saying, at the Jablonic game. Joe Hart was passing it out to them very quickly and I was saying at the time, I don't know what he's playing at, he's not playing with the calibre of players that he has before, he has to realise these guys have got serious limitations and this ain't going to work. We can't build out for the back quickly with these guys. We're going to have to upgrade. Uh, we're going to have to go long because there's no danger that these guys will be able to cope and hack it at Celtic under post the Coglu. So right away, that is the channel's worst opinion because the two of them truly proved me wrong. And good on them. They started Celtic's first 10 games of the season, both of them. I didn't realise that. They I mean, they, that's a lot of games to start at the start of the season. And I guess mm -hmm. they were a big part of the start of the season, John, as well. I mean, mm -hmm. a, another manager may have come into the club, looked at Ralston, who'd had failed loan spells at Dundee United, and St. Johnson looked at Taylor, who was underperforming as well, and thought, don't really need these guys. But Ange came in and got these guys on side, and they've been huge players for him this season, right from literally the first game against Meacheland. 
my hands are clean on Greg Taylor. I've got, I, I, I'm, I'm, I've got an impeccable record on the Greg Taylor thing because I, I think he's been important to the Celtic team, yeah, as you say, since the, since the very beginning. And I just said it before, like him, Ralston, um, Taylor, McGregor, they were all like disciples of the Ange thing very, very early on at Celtic in, in those early training sessions. Um, and I think it's no surprise that they've become two of the most improved players along the way. So fair play to them. I think in terms of my pundit ones, I'm, I am looking at the outside stuff and immediately my first thoughts were, first of all, Hugh Keevans predicting that Celtic would finish third um, in the league this season behind Rangers and Aberdeen. <laughs> they were so terrible throughout the whole Nearly season. Relegated. Um, and then the whole Chris Boyd thing where he's kind of saying that Anne should resign and give up his job. And that was at a period, I think, where people were just taking everything Celtic were doing in the, the the least good faith possible, giving them no credit or no kind of patience or anything at all. There was just so much hysteria around the club at that point. And I think Chris Boyd summed that up best around that time. He made that remark in about August or something. I don't think it was even, you know, in June or anything going on about how Ange Postacoglu should resign and head back to Australia. So I'll vote for that as the most absurd and the worst fund opinion of the season. What about yourself, Amish? Well, it's fair to say that, that Chris Boyd and Hugh Keevans dominated the the entries we had from, from people. I put a tweet earlier on. We're going to read them out as we go along. Um, I'll just go through them now. Ryan McCready, uh, Hugh Keevans, Ange stands for absolutely not good enough, which is, as, as I've commented previously in the channel, was crazy for, for on two levels. One, the fact that Hugh thinks names stand for something, which they just don't as far as I'm aware, and also the fact that <coughs> Ange has completely been good enough. Um, Kieran, Kitson and Murray, yeah, that's three different people saying uh, that one you mentioned, John Hugh Keevan, Celtic will finish third. Dan Tosney, Chris Boyd's Ange has no authority, I think that's the one you were alluding to again. Um, lots of mentions for Alan Brazil, uh, his infamous talk sport clip on Ange. Uh, Kyogo SZN saying the collective meltdown at Kyogo's goal versus Hearts. Do you remember that? I mean, John, I believe you were arguing with folk on Twitter. I think I had to put out a, a like half shot. an hour video the next day explaining that Kyogo, I didn't feel people it'd been offside. Didn't, people didn't understand the offside rule and it was so annoying because there was an argument that Kyogo was fractionally offside, but people were saying he was blatantly offside because they didn't understand that he could be behind, like the ball could be played backwards. So... There was all sorts of nonsense. Can I just stop the award ceremony here and get to the bottom of something? Mm. Hamish, are you wearing an Ange jumper right now? Mm, okay, well, it's not an Ange jumper, but I'll, <laughs> I'll claim it. I just wanted to, to get it off my chest before we continue. Absolutely. It's not an official Ange jumper. It's not going to be, I think it's a four-leaf clover, but we'll, we'll claim it. Thanks very much. I, I see you two made an effort. Big end of season awards night, and you two are sitting there in what you normally wear. Well, I'm not wearing my Adidas gear. Oh, fair point. You're not wearing what you normally wear. Maybe you have made an effort. I'm here in my normal clothes, so there we go. <laughs> Ordinary clothes. Right. Um, Danny saying, pundit moment of the season, although not about Celtic, is John Hartson being furious at Connor Salmon not scoring from 50 yards? Do you remember that? <laughs> <laughs> that was, I mean, at the time, that was incredible. And every time you watch it back, <laughs> I think Hartson says, like, I can't believe he's not scored for there. And he's literally like, on the halfway line. Um, doesn't qualify, I don't think. And Scott saying <laughs> Alan Brazil as well. Um, mine is the, yeah, the absolutely not good enough one from, from Hugh Keevans because... It's just the most Hugh Keevans thing ever. I know he says things to to irritate people and to get people to call in to the radio station that, that he's on basically every day of his life. Um, but that's a shocker. I mean, talk about going early. I mean, does I mean, he is he held accountable for comments like that, or does no, that just no. does that just go? I mean, I I don't really mind Hugh Keevans. He's he is a wind up merchant. He does what he does. He does his job, and and that's that. Sometimes it's funny. Sometimes it gets on your nerves. But I don't think you can disagree that two wild, wild comments um, that have not stood the test of time very well at all. I think Keevans was the person who wrote off uh, Lubo Moravchik way back yeah. in the day in the 90s. Um, so this is right up there with that and will probably live in the memory of some people um, given the way he's went on this season. Stevie, did, did we get a, a definitive answer from you? Or yeah. are you just slagging yeah. yourself off? I like to do that, but no, there is a serious answer and it's quite ironic I'm sitting here thinking because I went with Charles Nicholas and he basically said that Ronnie, um, Ange Postacoglu looked to him like the new Ronnie Dyla and I remember thinking, 
nah, I mean, that's just a lazy, lazy opinion. It was like Ronnie Dyler, you've got to remember, came to Celtic on the back of very little experience at all, right? But Ange Postecoglou had managed the national team in Australia and he'd won a league in Japan, managing for like 20-odd years. It was just a very, very lazy thing to say. Um, it was poor analysis. And amazingly enough, a few months later, um, he backtracked on it. I think he had a, an embrace with Ange Postecoglou after that. And as always, Charlie Nicholas just laughed it off but it was it was a ridiculous thing to say like not any of us knew John probably knew the most and did the most reading up but I didn't have a clue about Ange Postecoglou when he came in but right away I was like there's no danger a guy of 20 odd years experience is going to be anything like Ronnie Dyler it was so poor there was a lot was. of um there was a lot of Pedro Cassini chat as well which you know was horrendous I think Dave King said came out and said something about that so yeah a lot of disrespect a lot of nonsense par surrounding Postacoglu. Um, but I think across the piece here, we're, we're having to to give it to Hugh Keevans in totality for what he said across various newspapers right. and radio stations over the year. So Hugh Keevans can just have that award. A nice start. Um, award number two, and I'm looking forward to this one, the Best Ange Press Moment Award. Now, of all the awards that we stuck out, um, or I stuck out on Twitter earlier on, this was the one we got the most responses for. So I'll just run through some of them now. Um, in fact, no, I won't because I'm in the other document. Um, there we go. That's that. Right. Um, Dan Tosney. <laughs> uh, now, what's this one? Now you do response to Kenny McIntyre thinking there's a title race on in March. Do we know that one? I'm not quite sure of that one. I've I've seen so many and heard so many this season that that, might, that one might have passed me by. I do know, because I, I listen to Radio Scotland every week, Um just to hear what Andrew's saying, because I think sometimes the BBC interviews are, are more entertaining than the Sky ones, perhaps, or the, the yeah. press conferences themselves. He gets into it a wee bit. And I would say that Ange versus Kerry McIntyre across the whole season has been a bit of a laugh. But his best moment on Radio Scotland for me was after the Ferenc Varos game, where he was interviewed mm-hmm. by Al Lamont. And this was at a time where Celtic were kind of coming out of a period of bad form. And I think Ange was getting a bit more bullish again and a bit more... Um, cocky in the press because he kind of tightened it down for a while and was very, very, very humble and just mm. kept it kept on the down low for a while. But Al Lamont was a little bit moany, a little bit prickly in that one in the sense of recognising it was a good result but perhaps questioning the performance against Fenish Varos and Postacoglu was having none of it and it was basically, you know, it's a, it's a glass half full and a, a glass half empty and all, all this kind of stuff with Al Lamont. For me, that was the funniest interview of his entire season. That's the one I would vote for. Yeah, but he's been yeah. great value on Radio Scotland the entire entire. There's a weird thing going on with him and Kenny McIntyre, where obviously we don't know the, the, the kind of private conversations that are going on there, but Kenny McIntyre seems to think he's Angus pal and he's given it the whole thing on Twitter of, oh, I mean, this guy, tell, he says what he thinks, but he's been great for Scottish football. And I kind of, I could be wrong here, but I kind of think Ange just thinks, who is this guy who supports Rangers and keeps making daft comments? Um, Murray, they didn't win the Sacked by Christmas award. Um, from Ange, I think that was a pretty recent one. Ryan, I'm still on the same planet, mate. I think that was a, a, in response to a question about Hearts. Kitson, uh, another Hearts one, watching a different game to Robbie Nielsen. Uh, Pedro, there's a trophy I can show you just down the, the road from here, which was another recent one about the Champions League. Uh, Keith, picking out a, a, a better one, a really good one, actually. Forget your troubles for 90 minutes after the 3-0 Derby win. Was that one you liked, Stevie? Yeah, it was one that's that's like the number one man's quote for me, where he did say, you know, we had 60,000 in here tonight and I'm sure a lot of them walked in with some problems in their life for 95 minutes. We made them forget that and feel good and that is something special and it was just a really profound thing to say because it's very relatable. I mean, certainly speaking for myself and probably various other people um, have went through some rotten times and just hearing that from the manager that... Him and the players were obviously not just thinking about putting on the result, but thinking about what Celtic are all about, putting a smile on people's faces that meant a lot. I remember after the game reading that quote and welling up a wee bit. So I yes, thank I you, Ange, for I know thank you, Ange, for making me even more emotional this season. I forgot how many times Stevie has cried about across the season. How many did you Anyway, oh, there, um, there's a phone, guys. <laughs> You've, uh, the, thing, the weird thing is, I've never actually seen you crying, but you, you tell us you cry. Can we, so. <clears throat> can we, can we skip this bit, please? There's people in okay. the comments probably. You have a wee private it. moment to yourself, I think. That, that's what happens. Yes. There's nothing yes. wrong with that, Stevie. 
<laughs> Look, <laughs> I've used you guys have known me a very long time, and I've been a cynical moaning fan with Celtic, and and just completely changed it all. So that's only a good thing. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, what about this moment uh, from Dellers? Uh, best Ange press moment has to be given to John Reed. So Reed, <laughs> it's just incredible uh, for being a hard hitting journalist. Oh, and saying, "Hey, hi, Ange." Brilliant moment, wasn't it? I, I don't know if people have seen this. It's been all over Gigpod. Um, Reedzo, obviously, a, a brilliant, yeah. probably the star of Gigpod. Yeah, he is. He's the MVP. The guy's a legend. But yeah, it was before the before the cup final with Hibs, I believe. Yeah. And I think John was caught off guard when it was he was part of the fan media. He asked the question to Ange, and um, he, was, he was called up. And it was almost like he was, I think he was drinking water or something, but stuttered and he went, hey, hi, Ange. <laughs> and it was, Ange was just so composed, saying, hi, mate, as if like, hi, mate. this guy, but yeah. I'll try and be composed anyway, but sort your life out. <laughs> I have to say, Ange has been absolutely brand new with all the fan media yeah. all season long, knows the difference between who's asking the questions, whether it come, when it comes to established press and, and, and fan press, and has given so, so many in-depth answers even when some of my questions and perhaps other questions, you know, weren't the best, he still managed to go above and beyond and give an answer that was in depth and informative for the supporters, no one that is going directly to fans on all these podcasts and channels and stuff. So I just want to say, you know, shout out to Ange for that. Cause he's been absolutely brilliant with the with the fans. Even on, on Saturday after the game, I mean, he's he's absolutely knackered, Ange. He must be after the season. He said as much himself how much it's taken out of him. He still gave 15 minutes to fans, answered. I think the questions from fan media were really good, but but sometimes he's answering questions he's probably answered, you know, to the normal press 15, 20 minutes earlier. And he was excellent again, just so gracious, gave everyone, you know, the, the respect they deserved in terms of a response. And, uh, yeah, just love the guy. Um, Samuel saying, are you concerned about the financial impact of missing out in Europe? What's Andrew's response to that? I'm not an accountant, mate. That's the one. Um... Did we get your one, John? Sorry, I'm kind of losing track of things. Yeah, just that Al Lamont interview, you need to go back oh, and yeah. listen to that one yeah. if you can find it. That's my favourite. But, but I do like all the ones where Ange has said, he's not this, he's not that, he's not a DJ, he's not an accountant. He's <laughs> not all sorts of things that he said over the over the course. I think he said he's not a weatherman or something as well. But again, that initial one, I think it was to Chris McLaughlin. Because Chris McLaughlin gets to go to the, the, the manager announcements, even though he barely covers football anymore. And he was asking... Uh, Ange all about um, Scottish football, and and he said he's not from he's not from outer space or something. Um, and yeah. that one lived in the memory too, so that's that's one of mine as well. I'm getting more pelters, and we addressed this yesterday in the channel for me apparently saying love you to Ange on, on Saturday. <laughs> Terrible, it wasn't me. I'm going to have to say, get like the the voice experts or the audio experts out to prove it wasn't me. All I'll say is that it sounds like it was you to me, and I know <laughs> you, and you're denying it, and that's fine. But we'll let the audience decide on that one, I think. I think it might have been someone for the cynic. That's all I'm going to okay. say. But we'll see how it okay. goes down. Right, okay. mine was after Don McKay left the club and ahead of the Ross County game. Journalists looking for blood, bit of turmoil at Celtic. And if you think between these four walls in the dressing room there's been anything other than discussion about Ross County over the last two days, then you're missing the point of what we're all about. Take that, journals. Sit back down. Don't ask me that again. Let's move on. Let's go to the next one. This is a cracker. Best moment of the season. Now, this is one that I have been preparing for for months. Since about January, I have had um, loads and loads of different options for this. So I still at this stage don't know exactly what I'm going to go for. Um, Stevie, you, you get any obvious ones that come to your mind? There probably is an obvious one that loads of folk have said. It yep, can't be a goal, you know, by the way, we should say that. I know, a funny moment of the season would have been on the channel when I got ripped apart for about two weeks solid. No, it's still when I happened to, yeah, it still, it still does happen. Yes, you saw in the comments and the replies today where I just happened to say, bear in mind, Hamish, we're playing on the Sunday. The day before that, it's Saturday. And then I realised, oh, what have I done here? And I get ripped apart. Now, it didn't help. Not only was it on the channel, but you actually specifically used it as a promo clip on social media and everybody still to this day tears into me. I'd like to say that the therapist appointments have went all right and I'm feeling okay, but I still some, have to have weekly visits, so thank you. Some Aberdeen-based journalists would call that bullying. I'm just putting that out there. I mean, I think it's a bit of a shame. Hamish specifically targeting you on Twitter is a bit too much for me. I think you should 
harness the power of the people. I see comments, I see comments, Stevie, of people behind you telling Hamish to stop bullying his pal, and I agree with that. I'm, I'm on the Stevie train on that one. What, what, what day is your therapist, Stevie? All I will say is to quote Brendan Rodgers, just be careful what you wish for. Yeah. <laughs> any, um, any actual moments that, that don't revolve around you? Uh, come back to me and I'll think about it. Thanks for putting me on the spot there when I thought it was just a wind up one there, but okay, come back to me at the end. Oh, this is this is a proper one. This is like moment of the season. Um well I well I go through mine guys, you can you can mm-hmm. tell me what you think, right? Joe Hart saves against Yablonets at the start of the season, that the, the save he makes and then the one he makes, I think, for the following corner and the roar after that. Brilliant moment. Callum McGregor Shout and shite bag at Bona Barisic. So many people have said that. I think that might be the winner, but we'll wait and see. Cute, right. Right, okay. So when was the, the, the moment this season when you were excited about Celtic? And I know you may try and rewrite history and say the minute Andrew was in put a point, I was so excited. There was a moment when you got really excited, probably for the first time since the pandemic, you got excited about supporting Celtic. And it arrived, I think, at half seven in the morning. In the summer, when when Kyogo signed, yes, um, from Japan, amazing. How good was that it was waking up moment. that morning to the news? Mm. That was a good moment, and I, I, I arrived at the perfect time because, as I say, there was a lot of noise about stupid noise. I would add um, about whether Ange has authority and whether he's signing his own players. Boom, half seven in the morning, Kyogo arrives from Japan. He was top sco- goal scorer in J League at the time. He was coming over, and you know, immediately hit the ground running. You know, the the Kyogo signing has to be up there. I agree. I think some of those Rangers match moments in the 3 0 game, the McGregor, Barisic one, the Ball Boys has to be said as well. Um, the Ball Boys getting a right up, Alan McGregor, was was a fantastic moment across that night. I would even bring it right up to date. Like, I think a strong contender for me is just Tom Rogic's substitution off at the weekend. I mean, I just thought that that's going to be a moment. It's going to yeah. be an image that lives, it's going to be seared on the memory of just about every Celtic supporter. And I think that might be one of the defining images of the season. Um, so I, I would like to, to put my hat forward for, for that one. See, Is that your nomination? Oh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Stevie? A serious answer would have been the moment that my hero JJ just laughed at Ryan Kent when he knocked the ball off. I think we were 1-0 up at the time as well. So the game was on a knife edge in that 3-0 match. JJ was just so confident and Ryan Kent, who is by all accounts a decent player, just tried to get the tried to knock it by JJ. JJ shielded it and then just like knocked it off him and the ball went out for a goal kick. And it was the way that Kent was so frustrated and in his face and Juranovic just laughed right at him. Again at one 0 because that easily backfired and you know it was like only fifteen minutes in, but it just showed how confident and cool he was at that game and what a moment. So class. And what corner of Celtic Park did that happen in, Stevie? The corner where we did our video on Saturday. What one and two also, one? And also met JJ. The hero. Of course. Stars you're, trying are to, in there. you're trying to say Stevie's Ryan Kent. Is that, is that what you're getting at? No comment. We'll move on. <laughs> what are you doing tomorrow night, Stevie? <laughs> right. Listen, right. let's have it right. Right. Um Celtic players laughing at Rangers at Ibrooks, James McCarthy particularly, whereas the their fans lost the plot and started chucking things at them was pretty good. Roll with it. After the the Derby win over Rangers, that was I just I just think sometimes, and I've got more to say about this for another award, but I think sometimes there's just special moments and music can just bring it out of you sometimes and, and roll with it. Just just was a perfect tune. I'm actually sad it didn't make a reappearance at the end of the season at any point, um, but it was amazing after that Derby win. The Aberdeen kid running on at Petodri with with Joe Hart. Do you remember that? Oh, I, mean, I still don't know what was going on there. Um, John Dal Thomason at the start of the season, soon to be Hibs manager, perhaps. He's in the running for that, so we might see him in Scottish football, but at the start of the season, um, that was pretty good. A uh, couple of Scott Brown ones. Scott Brown scoring at Ibrooks was pretty funny, let's be honest. And in terms of Celtic, Scott Brown's standing ovation for Aberdeen as he, I think he pulled up his hamstring and, and walked off the park. That was a, that, that's my Rogic moment. I preferred that to, to the Rogic moment. I thought that was really, really nice. <laughs> Look at John's face. A um, couple of funny ones. James Talk McCarthy. What did he say, Stevie? Start of the season. Played a, <laughs> played a couple of games here and there. <laughs> Amazing. Um, excuse me, I asked for the large fish. 
That was good. That was good. What about Gigi? Title prediction after the Legend. score and a half check against Dundee. Amos, you had a meltdown on the channel about that. You made, a, <laughs> maybe, you made a video that could go down in the worst the worst opinions of the season. You had a video slating Gigi after that. Um, I thought that was great. It was a great moment, full of confidence, mm. swagger, and ultimately proven correct. So I did, you know, that's, an, that's another shout for a moment of the season. Yep. <laughs> Rangers women taking photos of Ange with Ange. Remember that? Is that not yep. just brilliant yeah. as well? Um, right, okay. My my choice. Again, sorry, I'm going between two documents here, guys. So that's what's slowing me down. My moment of the season um, was Stevie explaining the, the days of the week, probably. No, I'm kidding on. Um, I actually think I've deleted my moment of the season, guys. I had a belter. Um, I think it was full time in the Rangers game or something better like that. Don't say I'm not prepared. Um, who do you want to go for? I bought mine's is my personal one is the Rogers moment coming off, but I think we should probably. I think, I think Callum McGregor showing a Barisic sums up a lot of the feelings yeah. of the season at that point, and we should probably give it mm. to, to him for that moment. Again, I've remembered it. Sorry, I've remembered okay, my moment. Go, um, so it was like a couple of weekends ago, full time in the Hearts game. Uh, the, the outpouring of emotion when we knew we had won the league. I know we still needed a point, but seeing the players walking around that pitch, and I think for the first time, them all celebrating as if we'd won the league. Um, the Daft Punk song comes on one more time and the whole stadium just rocking. I think, you know, winning the league was great at Tanadice and people who were in the Celtic end there that night would, would probably prefer that. But for me, seeing the whole of Celtic Park come into terms with the fact we were actually, actually going to win the league you know, that five, ten minutes, the players all walking around, the tunes playing, Ange giving it loudy. Um, that was a moment that, that brought a tear to my eye this season, so so that would be my choice. But um, we're going for uh, McGregor and Barisic. Yeah. 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 That was the overwhelming uh, favourite in the replies that we got. Right, moving on to our next one, and this is quite an interesting one. We're going for the Unsung Hero of the Season Award. Plenty of suggestions, some of them funny, some of them... Very serious. Uh, Stevie, do you want to kick us off? Yes, I voted for... Let me find it. I'm doing a Hamish here. Ah, here we are. Aye, so I voted for whoever is in charge of procuring the wonderful chicken curry pies and keeping them in circulation at Celtic Park. I don't know who it is, but it's honestly one of the best decisions ever for the club. I will go every week for the chicken pies. Oh, as well as the football and Ange, but it's honestly whoever's <laughs> in charge of the menu and making sure the chicken pies aren't off the menu is honestly a hero for me. So there you go. That's my honest answer on it. Okay, John? Cool. Fair enough. Um, mine's is John Kennedy. Um, I think the amount of stuff John Kennedy's had to deal with over the last couple of years at Celtic's probably been pretty intense. A lot of people wrote him off last year and I was one of them, and I'm not going to lie about that. I thought it was maybe time for him to move on from the club. Um, and, and try and seek his path elsewhere if he wants to be a manager in his own right and do something else because it just felt like a natural stopping point for him. But he stuck around to his credit, got stuck in under Ange. And if you listen to Ange, John Kennedy's been a main man at Lennox Town this season and really bought into Ange's philosophy. And as we know, Ange doesn't take it every training session. Um, he doesn't get weighed into every training session. He observes every training session. But John Kennedy is the lead trainer and, and the lead coach in that scenario. And he's been instrumental in bringing these these players on. He's an incredibly, incredibly popular figure with the players in terms of one-to-one -one coaching and just advice and, and chat in general. He's so respected by every single player at Celtic who was there before and even the new players that have come in. Um, and I think he gets a lot of nonsense from the support. Um, all this kind of stuff about is he a defensive coach and all that nonsense. He's not that. He's never been that. Um, and I think, it, you know, he, he deserves a bit of um, credit this season for being part of this turnaround because it, it didn't look great for him last season. But just like it didn't look great for other players, it didn't look great, great for Callum McGregor. Callum McGregor stepped up and, and helped turn things around and he gets plenty of credit for it. And, and that's fine, he deserves that credit. But what I'm saying is that people with the club who were there before, like John Kennedy, um, Stephen McManus, etc., I think that Stevie Woods, the goalkeeping coach, deserve a, a lot of credit. Stevie Woods was getting pellers last season too because of the situation with uh, Vasilis Barkas. Stevie Woods has been an integral part of Joe Hart's resurgence. And, and, and Stevie Woods has done that time and again 
with goalkeepers at Celtic. He did it with Fraser Forster, did it with Craig Gordon, and now he's doing it with Joe Hart. So he deserves credit too. I think John Kennedy is almost a, a secondary leader in that group, um, and I think he deserves a lot of credit. So I would put his, his name forward. Okay, very good suggestion. Keith, agreeing with you. Um, <clears throat> elsewhere, keep it JC and Ryan saying Greg Taylor. John will also be a fan of that. Um, Jack saying, he's given us three actually, Starfelt, Taylor or Beaton. Um, Murray saying Leah Labada. Scott saying Joe Hart. Pedro, eh, and I saw Mazar in the live chat as well, saying the Japanese translator um, because the entire squad loves him. Those photos with, with him and, and the four Japanese players were brilliant. Elliot saying Strachan's notepad. It's a laptop, isn't it? It's not a notepad, so I don't know what Elliot's <laughs> on about. But uh, Dan Tosney saying Frank Tromboli, who I believe is Angie's agent, who persisted and persisted and, and finally got him an opportunity at a big European club, and we're very grateful for that. Kitson saying Anthony Ralston. Kieran saying Carol Starfelt, Kyogo and Benny agreeing with that. Liam saying unsung hero Stevie Woods, actually, um, because God bless him. And Samuel saying Yakimakis. Um, I'm seeing some shouts in the live chat for the likes of Greg Taylor, for Callum McGregor being um, a, an unsung hero, for Anthony Ralston, of course. Uh, yeah, another one for the Japanese translator. Uh, Egyptian King agreeing with you, John, and saying John Kennedy. Um, so plenty in there. I'm going for the DJ, the Celtic Park DJ, who has got it bang on this season at key moments after the 3-0 home win over Rangers as I've already said roll with it amazing amazing moments I know he could he could literally have put on like follow follow and it would still have been an amazing moment he could have put on anything he wanted and the Celtic support would still be loving watching the team walk around but I just thought he nailed that and I think over the celebrations as well he, he just got it so right I mean the amount of times I've listened to um that Daft Punk song over the last couple of weeks is, is crazy and just wish I could be back at that moment and the Jota song and um, Live It Up at the weekend I thought was was just right, just just the right amount of golden but not not kind of going overboard type thing. Um, so I don't know who he or she is. Um, I don't know if they're getting a contract renewal, if we'll see them again, but I would certainly hope we would because I think they, they nailed it. And Celtic don't always get, get these things right. I've been at many trophy days in the past where it's felt very like flat and they've maybe just left things too long or, or sometimes they don't just let the crowd breathe. They have tunes and tunes and you just think, just let the fans sing. But I think they've nailed it and I think the, the, the disc jockey has nailed it as well. So that's who my, my vote's going for. But what's the consensus here? Well, I don't know. There's three vastly different uh, situ uh, situations. What's the consensus, everyone in the chat? Give us a everyone shout. Everyone in the chat saying the ball boys for getting the ball oh. back to Joe Hart so quickly on a, on a week to week basis. Shout. Fastest ball boys in the West, um, <laughs> or the East, as, as it were. Um, yeah, so they're a good shout. The ball boys are a good shout if we want to just throw that in as a wild card. Plus, the same ball boys managed to get a reaction out of Alan McGregor as well. Yeah. And, uh, oh, and Gio. Maybe give it to the ball boys. Sure. I'm happy with that. Well, well done, ball boys. You have won the unsung hero of the award from uh, award from sixty seven heel heel. Right, more serious one. Young player of the season. I don't think we're going to spend too long doing this one. Now, just looking at the what I got in from Twitter, and nine, ten, eleven people saying Liel Abada, Scott saying Stephen Welsh. I can only assume, with all due respect to Stephen Welsh, that Scott didn't know Abada was eligible because it's Liel Abada, is it? And either if if either of you are saying someone else, then um, my my fingers just hovering over the remove button. <laughs> no, it's got to be a badder. Stevie, you like a badder. Do you want to have a wee, a wee run, a wee, a wee go at a badder over the course of the season here? Yeah, I just think a badder on his debut season. What Played 36 games, 10 goals and 6 assists as well. Not to mention, contributing to some amazing like individual moments as well that I'll always remember. That goal against Rangers is still the moment of the season for me in terms of goal, the how mental I went I've not celebrated it even to this day <laughs> it was just unbelievable the last minute goal against uh, Dundee United before that he's just been a huge player for us and the thing is if that's what he's doing in his debut season then next season he's going to get even better I honestly feel that wingers get you know wingers do come in for a bad rap don't they with consistency but you look at his numbers you look at his stats and you look at his age and you've got to say it's such an impressive debut season for an unknown really 
Mm-hmm. And I just can't wait to see what he can do next season with a proper pre-season when he's not rushed in um, to like, what is it, 48 hours or something before a Champions League qualifier. It's not going to be like that for him this time. He'll be able to get a proper rest and he'll now know the players that he's playing with. Settled in that squad and he's going to be a delight to watch. I think he'll be even more effective next season. I can't wait. I, I think yeah. he's. I think he's been a really good player for us, mm. you know, the season there. But the the thing is, I think I think there's so many parts of his games that he's he's got real growth, you know, to do as well. And I think there's, I just think there's an outstanding player there if he can find even more consistency and maybe improve his kind of final ball in terms of crossing. But his his knack of getting into the right area at the right time and like he finishes like a striker. He could be a striker. In fact, we, we played him there at points in December, um, and the amount of big goals he scored at big moments, John, was was crazy. Yeah, I mean, that goal against United, the last minute one, was yeah. like as big a goal as we scored all season. Um, I made an instant impact. I think he was he was re- relied upon a lot in the early stages of the season, almost out of necessity, as Ange kind of got up to speed with the recruitment and bringing players in and getting a settled team. Um, but he did show up in some of those big early moments. But I think and I think Stevie's right. I think there's going to be more to come from him. But I think there probably has to be. I've got a feeling that over the last couple of months, Ange has been almost protecting him a wee bit. And perhaps keeping him out of the team a bit more often, and obviously he likes that that Maeda and, and Jota combination on on each flank. So so that's hard to get into the team when you've got that kind of quality. Um, but I, I, you know I'm really excited to see him playing next year. I think as we get back to the midweek weekend football, Abad is going to be in that starting eleven a lot again. Um, and I, hopefully, you know Neil Beaton moving on isn't too big of a disruption for him because I know Postecoglou has spoken about a lot about how Beaton was such an integral you know, figure in helping him settle in Scotland. So hopefully that's not too much of a blow to him on, on a personal level and on a kind of um, happiness level. But I'm really excited to see what's come. Undoubtedly the young player of the season, like no doubt about it. So fair play to him and hopefully we get uh, another good season of him next year. Ryan coming in with an alternative suggestion. Those two wee lads Stevie interviewed have to be in with a shout here. Excellent performances, Stevie. It's hard to argue with that. It is. Um, it's amazing to get honest answers and polite sort of answers, polite sort of manners as well from two of you guys, especially when the two people I usually do these things with are the entire opposite. So it says a lot about you too, Hamish and John. Thanks very much. Still managed to get a dig in there with a, a lovely fluffy story. Um, right, I've somehow forgot to do this, guys. So goal of the season award just before we do player of the season um now again this is one that always gets people talking loads and loads of suggestions murray saying abada versus rangers kitson and dan saying kyogo second versus motherwell on sunday which was an absolute belter maybe a bit of recency bias there though um patsy and ryan saying kyogo versus ferenc varos for the jota pass scott saying rogic at tanaday solo goal Jack saying Kyogo's second against Hibs in the cup final. Keith agreeing with that. Elliot saying Kyogo's first in the League Cup final. I actually agree that I think that's an even better goal. I think his first touch for that goal to get his back in that game was brilliant. Um, McGregor volley away to Meacheland being suggested. Uh, Hatati at Tynecastle. O'Reilly after a million passes, says Albowski against St Johnson in the 7 0 game. Is your uh, shout in there, John? No, I don't think it was. My my shout is Rio Tati's second goal against Rangers in the three 0 game. Yeah, it's a good one. It was just not only a quality goal, like Rangers were got ripped apart by the rotation in the team and then the ball ended up by Hatati. Fantastic touch and finish. Not just the quality of the goal, but just the magnitude of the goal as well. Going two 0 up against that Rangers team in that moment in that match, you know, quite early in the game was just a huge moment for everyone. Felt that's felt so triumphant. It just felt like we were on our way to a massive, massive win. Um, and I don't think another goal in the whole season has given me quite that same feeling. There's been, obviously been lots of great goals, lots of big goals. But I, uh, that second goal that Hitati scored was just so good, like on a level of Celtic excellence against our, our biggest rivals in the league, our biggest rivals culturally. It was just fantastic. I mean, that I just think it was great. And just I love the celebration. I love the, I love the celebration of the fans. I also love the celebration of the player. Just turning it, turning around and just almost in disbelief at how you know it had panned out for him and, and what he'd just done. Um, that was a fantastic moment. Um, just, not just in terms of the quality goal, but the importance and the, the magnitude of it. That, that's my favourite. There was so little backlift, wasn't it? And he just hmm. he just put it into the net. It was a exceptional goal. Um, yeah, I think Matt O'Reilly's one against St. Johnson was a brilliant team goal. 
for me, it's Kyogo against Ferenc Varos. The, the, the pass from Jota, the first touch. I mean, the, the, the pass is like the best pass I've ever seen and it's not even my favourite thing in the goal. I, I think the pass is brilliant, but the first touch, you can close your eyes and I always think it's like an iconic goal when you can close your eyes and actually see it from that angle behind and you just see the ball coming and Kyogo just traps it's, it and it's... moves it on and even the finish is amazing. It's one of those ones where you can hear in your head the seats at Celtic Park going up as oh, people stand yeah, up and you can hear the clatter of the seats. And he takes that touch, you hear the clatter of the seats and he bangs it into the back <laughs> of the net. It's always a sign of a stunning Celtic Park goal. That I love the fact that game was on it, uh, you know, on a Tuesday afternoon as well and, and I think 55,000 people turned up for that game. And I love the fact they got to see, for me anyway, the goal of the season. I know we, we scored kind of more important goals, but that was an important goal at the time as well. I mean, we were struggling to break them down. We were playing relatively well, but hadn't really created much. They were quite defensive, decent team, champions of Hungary, and it just took that bit of brilliance. And, you know, I think it won the Europa League goal of the group stage. For, for me, that's my one, just for the simple fact that, you know, that's a goal I could watch a hundred times every single day and, and genuinely not not grow tired of it. Where whereas I think, you know, a lot of other goals, as much as I loved them, I, I maybe would after about fifty times I'd be like, right, okay, that's enough. Stevie. Yeah, same. It's funny though, isn't it? We scored some brilliant goals in Europe. Jota away to Ferenc Faros, JJ's mm. penalty and Jota's goal in Leverkusen. I would yeah. say if the result was different, Jota's goal against Leverkusen. Would have won it, but I went with the same as yourself, Hamish. It can only be Kyogo against Ferenc Varos. The way that we were so devastating and clinical in those three minutes was only anything I'd seen of Celtic in Europe. It was exceptional, and it was the way that the pass was exquisite, the touch phenomenal, and the finish outstanding. All those, like the fact that all those came together, and it was like if that was any other team in Europe, though, to be fair, the Europa League um, did actually bum it up in social media. They were just like, a bit. So, I mean, and quite rightly so, but if that, I mean, that is a goal fit for like Champions League level, you know, I mean, it was that good. It was one of the best I've ever seen and it's certainly the best I've seen this season. Quality. The the Champions League admin, the, whoever's the admin of that account, is absolutely loving the Celtic are in the Champions League next year because the amount of engagement and interaction they get from Celtic fans when they're posting goals and stuff about any player is unbelievable. I mean, they've started that already, but the Europa League account was just, it was almost all Celtic at one point in the group stages last mm -hmm. year, so um, that'll be fun that'll be fun to look out for next season. It sounds like I'm outvoted, you're going for the Cuba French Varus goal, so I'll, I'll take that. It's a, it's a worthy winner, so we'll, we'll go for that. Okay, just another few shouts. Uh, Kevin saying, Hatati versus Hearts, oof, the noise, hitting the yeah. net. If you ever listen to that without the commentary, it's brilliant. Yeah. Uh, Paul saying Anthony Rousen versus Ross County. Yeah. Uh, Thomas Big Tam, his namesake, versus yep. Dundee United. Um, Brian saying Hatati goal against Hearts. That's probably an underrated one. The thing that slightly kind of brings it down is the fact it goes kind of in the middle of the net. I feel like if it's right in the corner, that's one of my number ones. But I think, I think maybe Gordon maybe could have done better with that. I think that makes it even better, just the sheer power in it. It took it yeah. right past Gordon. I mean, Gordon's winning Player of the Season awards. I mean, he's been in a magnificent form, but I mean that, that there was no stopping that goal. I don't think anywhere I went in the goal was it was that fierce. Hopefully, we see more from that, more of that from Hatate next season too, because he started off on a bit of a goal streak that, that's kind of dried up a little bit. So hopefully, once he gets more settled in, we, we get more of that as well. A few people say McGregor against Meacheland as well. Yeah, stunning. Um, that unbelievable goal. Mm -hmm. I think if that happens maybe later on in the season in a, a meaningful game, we're, we're probably voting that number one, but you have to take everything into context. And now for the big one um, that might be a straight shootout between a couple of people. It's the 67 Hail Hail Player of the Season Award. Um, is, it, is it just a, a straight shootout between McGregor and Carter Vickers, are there other options we want to raise? I feel like we should probably chat about other players. As I know we've, we've already done Unsung Hero, but that was a bit of a kind of non-player thing for, for us anyway. So, Steve, is there any, any kind of players who aren't going to win this, but you want to give a, a special mention to right now? And it can't be Juranovic, because I'm fed up with that loving. Joe Hart as well. Really, really important player. We needed stability at the back. We needed a figure we could trust in goals and that defence needed a rock at the back of them because they were so criticised and maligned. Joe Hart came in and he has been outstanding for Celtic, one of the best signings Ange has made. Had it not been for how good CCV and Callum McGregor were, Joe Hart's maybe 
a, ve- a very serious shout for our player of the year. But I am, in fact, I'll wait until you talk about the other options then uh, before I give you who my shoot is. But yeah, it's one of the two players mentioned. You can have one player as well, John, if you want. Well, you have more than one if you want. But I mean, I've honor- the honourable mentions for me are like the, the players who were injured. Like Kyogo was just outstanding in that for six months and then obviously picked up the injury, kind of excludes him from the award. I think Jota as well, he had a spell out with injury um, and then that kind of period, February, March. But he was so good in the run in there um, that he's come right back into it for me. If, if he was fit and playing all season, he would have been right up there for me. Like I think Jota goes down as like one of our best loan signings ever, if not the best loan signing ever. I mean, you could say that about Carter Vickers too. But I've just loved watching Jota this season. I mean, I think he plays with such, he plays with without fear and plays with a freedom that is just exciting to watch. Um, and you know, I would love to see him back. So those are two honourable mentions. I mean, if you if you want to do your honourable mentions first, Tamish, before we get into who will actually win it, then I'm happy to do that. Yeah, I mean, probably the same players you guys have picked out. Joe Hart's just been a massive, massive presence for us. Um, made big saves at big times. I feel like when everyone talks about Joe Hart, they they automatically go to the kind of off-the-pitch stuff or, or the leadership stuff and the experience he brings. But he's been a brilliant, brilliant keeper for us this season as well. And he's made so many big saves at big moments, both in, in Europe and domestically, um, especially at the start of the season, I think, when the defence wasn't quite as settled as it is now. So he won us loads of points this season. Kyogo has just been, been amazing, just a... Like an absolute revelation. Um, I think Yakimakis has has been absolutely brilliant this season. Um, I mean, the, the the prospect of him having a full season with a pre season under his belt, I think, is should be terrifying for for not just Scottish teams but European teams as well next season. I know it's a debate for another day, but and I know Ange only plays one striker, but I, I genuinely think there's going to be a big problem next year. It's a great problem to have, but. I just think Kyogo and Yakimakis no. get, getting those two into the team is is going to be a struggle because we're, we're, for, for me, we're going to be playing too many games, mate. Like there's just going to be aye, so many if games. You get, if you get to a big game, who are you picking? I mean, no, you'd pick Kyogo because he's to, or not. For you'd me. pick Kyogo. I mean, he's a better player. He's the best player in Scotland. <laughs> I would pick mm. Kyogo, but I would say there's going to be so many games that Yakimakis is going to be starting for Celtic next season. I don't think you need to like they're both going to get so much game time, and it's going to be good to watch. Hmm. Um, <laughs> still happy with that no Yakimax is far too good to be sitting on the bench even for big games but anyway we'll discuss this next season um, who else are we going for then it's, is it between Carter Vickers and and McGregor guys what, what do we think yeah I mean for me I understand why people say Carter Vickers I think he's been immense but for me it's Carter McGregor in multiple reasons again like, like Joe Hart a lot of people talk about the leadership stuff because he's the captain and he's pulled together this group of players and, and that can't go under there but I just think he's been so good in that midfield just in terms of a pure player for Celtic this season massive turnaround from last season um, and it's been so crucial starting attacks dropping deep to help for the defence and those tricky periods when they're passing it between themselves it's McGregor who often comes and gets it it's McGregor who drives us forward in those big moments Ibrox you know Hearts even when we were 1-0 down against Hearts recently like McGregor from start to finish, from that goal against Mitchell and right up to that game against Hearts and, and then Dundee United midweek. It's just been so good for Celtic this season. And he is undoubtedly my player of the year, like above Carter Vickers quite strongly for me. Yeah, I would probably agree with that. I think McGregor has, has just been everything for the club and he's just been so crucial to the, the way we play and him buying into Ange both, you know, on the pitch and off the pitch. We've said in a few times previously that he's he's almost Ange's leader on the pitch. Um, and again, just real quality he brings. I just think he's he's such a key player linking the defence to the, the midfield and the attack, given how we play. So McGregor for me, I think Carter Vickers, though, has just been excellent, so consistent all season. Um, you know, I mean, how many bad games has he actually had, Carter Vickers? Um, and I just really hope we sign him as well. And he's probably just unfortunate that McGregor's had such a good season because I think in any other season, Carter Vickers would have been the guy we'd go for. Stevie, is it McGregor for you as well? It's Carl McGregor for me, as I've said so often in this channel. Best footballer in Scotland. Um, we wouldn't have won this league without him. 
can't imagine anyone else being a captain and dearly, dearly hope that he finishes his career with us. He is exceptional. And also another wee mention to the fact that there's been so many new players, different nationalities, different personalities all brought in this season. They had to gel really quickly. Cal mcgill has been at the middle of that. He's had to lead them always, had to be the go-to guy. He's had to like, sort of ingrain them into the Celtic way of thinking, what we're all about. It's not an easy thing to do for all the as I say, different nationalities, personalities, but he's been so strong, he's led by example, and loves him. And the combination, you know, what you guys said as well, it's just, I cannot imagine Celtic, uh, Cal McGregor and Celtic ever being apart, to be honest. Brilliant, brilliant player, and I'm so lucky we've got him. I agree, I agree. I think most people, Ryan, um, Kitson, Kieran, Kyogo, Keep it up, JC, all saying Cal McGregor. To be fair, there's four or five in for Carter Vickers as well, so it's maybe not quite as unanimous as, as, as us three are saying. I think there's a lot more people do think Carter Vickers has been our player of the year. Um, but I think just looking a, a quick glance at the live chat, um, looks like Callum McGregor, Mark on uh, Facebook saying, uh, Callum McGregor for sure, leadership, drive and consistency, everything a Celtic captain should be. Uh, and I think we would all agree with that. So Callum McGregor, player of the year. 67 yeah. hill hill and um, hopefully he can just kick on next year. We're back in the Champions League, trying to win the league again. We did forget one award earlier on. It's this one. The, uh, the this best has been seam- seamless, seamless award show. Yeah, no. <laughs> it's honestly been like people do probably watch this and think it just comes together, but it's like hours of prep and it's been difficult. But we've got there in the end. Um, this is mine, guys. Shota yeah. and Hitati. In the back that Ibrooks after winning two one. Uh, any other suggestions? Just uh, Juranovic in general has been great on Instagram all year. Um, bought into all the fireball stuff, doing that live stream on on the night we won the league. Also, just <laughs> responds to every single Celtic player, every single other Celtic player, and um, with some sort of comment. Um, and that's been good part all there. You know, a lot of the players given Cameron Carter Vickers the the fridge nickname was good patter. Yeah. I think Starfelt's post, even even this week after getting a bit of abuse from a certain club's fans that we would not criticise <laughs> on the flight to, 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 to Spain, and then posting on Instagram, respect the champions, that was good. Um, but yeah, that photo at Ibrox, that's the, that's the iconic uh, player Instagram moment of the season for me. Um, but I think Juranovic Jur- for me, across the whole season, Joe Hart's been great on Instagram as well all season, really building up a rapport, a rapport and a bond with the Celtic support in, in any way he can with his Instagram stories and posts. I think he's probably posted the most of any player this season. Yeah. Um, so Joe, Joe Hart's up there as well. Did, did, did Celtic players always do this? Because I, I I can't remember like last season it happening much. I feel like back in the kind of original Lennon days when he was manager, it happened a fair bit. I remember like kind of Ledley and all that lot um, doing it quite a lot. But it's certainly been more prominent this year, Stevie, than I can ever remember yeah. before. And it's a good sign, I guess. I think it's because the again the, the engagement and the relationship between the fans and the players is as positive as it's ever been. So we're probably noticing it more, and they probably did do it in the past. But yeah, it's just been fantastic to see all the players. They seem like a real tight knit, t- um, very close knit together group, and it's so great to see. And from my answer again, no shock. JJ after Dundee United, it was just some laugh. It was just quality, and all the players, <laughs> all the players laying into him. Um, was it Taylor telling him to grow, grow up? up. Um, Welsh basically saying calling him an idiot and all that. It was just class, and he was just laughing at it all a bit. Just seems like a right good laugh, yeah, guy. I think we're going for that, guys, because that for me was just, just amazing. Like, why was he? Right, I've got so many questions. Why was he driving? Would he not have got the bus? I thought he'd get the bus to Tanzania. I think he was a passenger. I think someone else was driving. Right. Like. Why, why? So he's getting driven. That's fine. Why is he not with the team when they're all going back to Celtic Park? Why is he on his own? Do you know what? JJ can do what he wants, Amy. That's the <laughs> official answer. He can. can do what he wants. Right. Okay. So he's won that. Well done, JJ. A, a fitting way to end, I guess, giving JJ an award. Stevie would certainly agree. Um, just finally, John, I think we've got a wee... Uh, yes question to do for for a couple of Mm -hmm. tickets for this event that's coming up take it away john whenever you're ready so there's an event at the end of may at the sec in glasgow martin o'neill and and a few other Celtic legends with the the first star group which i think is a company owned by the players and they're they're putting on a night tickets still available we've been lucky enough to be given the honor of giving away a pair of tickets and we're going to give it away in the live chat tonight um 
So you need to be living in Britain or Ireland or actually have an intention to go to this to win it. So so be honest when you give your answer. The question to win the competition is who scored Celtic's very first competitive goal under Ange Postacoglu. If you want to enter the competition, answer the question in the chat live right now and we'll pick a, a winner at random. Um, and then you could be going to the SEC to watch this event on the 29th of May. If you win the competition, we'll... we'll Get you to get to contact us on on Twitter to, to DM us and um, give us your contact details and then you'll have a pair of tickets to go to this event. So, seen answers already. Hamish, do you want to do the honours and pick someone at random here? Needs to be a right answer, eh? Needs to be a right answer. Somehow got it wrong. I'll, well, I give them maybe a few more seconds just because he might be bashing away the keyboard like mad. And I don't want anyone to miss out. And then I'm just going to pick one at random. Um, Good memories of this goal. I mean, there was only like nine thousand in the stadium at the time, but it was a, uh, it was pretty good. Yeah, it was. I mean, yeah. Again, an incident impact from one of the player from one of Andrew's signings, as Steve alluded to earlier. Um, yeah, first competitive goal, guys. Not not the first piece of goal. As as uh, Steve alluded to earlier, came into the club. You know, twenty four hours, forty hours before, and, and did the business. Who are you picking? Right, am I doing Arman this? Here? Yes. Right, Connor Boy, eighteen eighty eight. Who's that? <laughs> okay. Connor Boy Le- 1888. Liel Abada was the right answer. So Connor Boy 1888. Um... Wh- wins these pair of tickets to this event. Connor Boy, get in touch with us on Twitter. With either myself or Hamish, DM us or just send us a message um, and we'll get the tickets to you. We'll put you in contact with the people who get the tickets to you and you can go enjoy a night on us at the end of the month. A night on First Star, a night on Martin O'Neill with Sutton and Mravchik and Lambert and all these legends. So have a good one with that. Now I've picked a second one in case, just in case Connor's at the wind up and he can't make it for whatever reason. But reach out to his Connor. Congratulations if you if you're able to go. Um you've got a wee treat on us and the the Celtic legends. Um I think that's us guys. We're just coming up to an hour. Um I would say that's I do the whole recap on the season type. Oh, it's been amazing and all that, hasn't it? But we've got far more recapping to do. We've got big plans for for next week with a, a few videos that I'm, I've been working on over the last couple of days that you're going to absolutely love. Um, and we've got Jackie McNamara back in the channel tomorrow to chat all about the season as a whole, uh, about last weekend. Is there anything else you guys want to say before we round this I one just... off? Want to, I know we're not going anywhere this season, but I do want to say thanks to everyone who watches 67 Hill Hill, who visits the website, follows us on Twitter, who engages and speaks to us and um, promotes our stuff. You know, it's been so humbling over the course of the season to see the audience grow and get more excited about what we do. Um, and I know, you know, I just am incredibly grateful for allow, you allowing us to do this because that's basically why we're allowed to do it is because you guys watch and follow and read and all that stuff so thank you to all you guys we're going to be here throughout the postseason into the summer and into next season with Ange Postacoglu in the box office Celtic going into the Champions League Can't wait for it Stevie final final comment Yeah just to say thanks to everybody for the backup against Hamish this season <laughs> because I actually thought that everybody would side with Hamish and be determined to get me off this channel after my first couple of appearances in summer but very slowly um, I've built a siege mentality and everybody's got right behind me against the zealot that is Hamish Carton so I'm going to have an army to defend me one day Hamish so you should probably quit the wind ups while you're ahead here where, where does this narrative that I'm somehow bullying you come from is it from like a couple ask, of comments I, I thought ask, it was 50-50 ask the, chat. 50. Ask the Stevie, chat and they will back me up Stevie I think I've found his weakness just mention the Jack and Marcus Kyogo debate and you'll get all flustered <laughs> Don't start, don't start. Right, we're going to go, John, Stevie, thanks very much. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. As I say, we're back tomorrow with Jackie and David. Speak to you then.